He was the composer who really kicked the Baroque era into gear. Oh, and he also wrote the first great operas while he was at it. I'm the Classical Nerd, and today we're talking about Claudio Monteverdi. Claudio Monteverdi was born in Cremona in 1567, and was to be the oldest of five. His education followed parallel paths of music and religion. He began writing madrigals in the Renaissance style, and ended up breaking into the publishing world in 1582. He worked his way up the ranks of the court musicians in Mantua, before being appointed their music director in 1602. Monteverdi, after being attacked in the press by a music theorist named Artusi, defended his work by saying it was part of the seconda pratica, the second practice, where the text is the most important thing, and it's okay to break rules every now and then if you're really highlighting whatever text you're setting. In 1607, he wrote the first really good opera, but which mean it's still in the repertoire, Lord Feo, after the myth of Orpheus going to the underworld. He followed this up soon after with his masterpiece of church music, The Vespers, in 1610. Tragedy, stu tragedy struck as his wife, who was a singer in the court, died soon after Lord Feo's premiere. When the Duke of Mantua died, his son fired Monteverdi, and he led a quasi-nomadic existence until he landed a gig in Venice. He became the conductor at the Basilica de San Marco in 1613, and the Venetians were glad to count amongst their ranks one of the most influential composers of the era. Venice was a center of culture and was very liberal for its time. In fact, it's basically the 17th century Italian version of Las Vegas. The first opera houses popped up there and then folded just as quickly, beginning in 1637. Because of this, operas were no longer the domain of the intelligentsia and the nobility, and so the plots became much more secular, much more accessible to those who maybe weren't as familiar with all the great Greek tragedies. And it also meant that because they were publicly funded, you couldn't afford these massive orchestras and massive choruses and all these different singers. So the instrumental forces and the singing forces were significantly pared down. Monteverdi's final operas are written for public consumption at these opera houses. In fact, many consider his greatest work to be his final opera, 1642's Le Incarnazione di Popea, a tale of Nero and his mistress who sleeps her way to the top to become empress. For a long time, L'Orfeo was the only Monteverdi opera in the repertoire, but recently Popea has had a re-examination, and people are beginning to bring it back. Monteverdi died in 1643, having overseen the transition from the Renaissance to the Baroque. His ideas on urgency and expressivity in music brought on a great musical revolution. In fact, his cycle of nine books of madrigals spans 64 years, and it is through this that we have a lens into this stylistic change.